Okay. January 12th, nine. No, he wants me to start from the writings. I just give, yeah, I'm just giving him a flying start. January 12th, 1942. It was such a shock that I was incapable of writing it down until today. At four o'clock on Thursday afternoon, I am returning from shopping at Hendelseplatz on the front platform of the number 16 tram. At the county court, people crowding on as usual. Just before the station, a young man turns towards me, very clean-cut face, cold gray eyes, and says quietly, get off at the next stop. I, quite mechanically, since I changed trams there, yes, only as I get off does it strike me as curious. I'm waiting for the number 14. Then he's standing beside me. Where are you coming from? Where are you going? Come with me. I did not even ask for any identification. As we are walking, he says, State Police, do you want to see my ID? Not here. Opposite the station where I used to park, a big office building between the hotels, so this is the Gestapo building about which so many terrible stories are told. My dog catcher says to a comrade coming towards him, he is wandering around on the tram during rush hour. I want to frisk him. To me, by the by, without shouting. You wait here behind the stairway. I stood there for a few minutes, very short of breath, all the time thinking, when? Will they let you go? Someone who was passing bawled at me. Turn around! I had to face the wall. My dog catcher reappeared after a while and beckoned me to come up. Upstairs, a very large office. One could look into another room, a kind of living room with a table laid. He looks through my pocketbook, my briefcase. What are you doing? I, I am writing a book, but you'll never be able to publish it. From tomorrow, you'll have work to do, Gail Plant, Zeiss Econ Factory. Do you have problems with your heart? I was probably very pale, speaking laboriously, gasping for breath. Thus far, the treatment had been almost decent. Now, another policeman appeared, perhaps one rank higher. Average height, brown, mocking eyes. He addresses me familiarly. Take your mug off the table. Put the hat on. Isn't that what you do? Where you stand, that's holy ground. I am Protestant. What are you, baptized? That's just a cover-up. As a professor, you must know the book by somebody Levison. It's all in there. You circumcised. It's not true that it's a hygienic prescription. It's all in the book. How old? What? Only 60? Why, man, you must have been running riot with your hair. What were those paws of yours doing? You've snatched something, haven't you? Empty the briefcase! I had to open everything once again. A loaf, a bottle with half a liter of milk. Good milk. But no, it skimmed. Milk, good milk. But no, really, it is skimmed milk. Half a pound of blackberry tea. How come so much? You can buy it every day. Who's going to win the war? You or us? What do you mean? Well, you pray for our defeat every day, don't you? To Yahweh, or whatever it's called. It's the Jewish war, isn't it? Adolf Hitler said so. I'm Adolf Hitler said! It's true! Why do you shop at Chemnitz Plots? We, we used to live there. You shop there because 
you get more there. It's going to stop from tomorrow. You register your coupons at the nearest crossers. You better not let yourself be seen on the tram here. You can walk. And if we see you here again, you're going. You know where to? I simply said, yes. He left. The dog catcher stood motionless and sullen in the corner. May I go now? He came with me as far as the steps, and his final words were, and if you weren't so old and decrepit, you'd be put to work. Only when I was outside did I notice how much my chest and my left arm hurt. Still, I was free, as it is called here. I could have disappeared for a very long time. Ernst Kreidel has been in for seven and a half weeks, forever, with the help of an injection. I walked home very slowly. I still have not completely recovered registered my J coupons at Vaza Platz. Since then, I have taken very few steps in the open air, have not left this area, and shall not leave it again. The business of their fabulous tyranny, mocking humiliation has taken hold of me far too much. Since then, I've no longer been able to get rid of the thoughts of death. Only consolation. The reversal in Russia can no longer be disguised. But I cannot wait much longer. And that is probably the prevailing mood of all the wearers of the star. Always the same seesaw. The fear that my scribbling could get me put into a concentration camp. The feeling that it is my duty to write. My life's task, my calling. I shall go on writing. This is my heroism. I shall bear witness, precise witness. My dog catcher said to a comrade coming towards him, he's wandering around on the tram during rush hour. I want to frisk him. To me, by the by, without shouting, you wait here behind the stairway. I stood there for a few minutes, very short of breath all the time, thinking, when 
Will they let you go? Someone who was passing bawled at me, turn around! I had to face the wall. My dog catcher reappeared after a while and beckoned me to come up. That's that. Well, tell, me when you, tell me when you're ready. Yeah. To me, by the by, without shouting. You wait here behind the stairway. I stood there for a few minutes, very short of breath, thinking all the time, when will they let you go? Someone who was passing bawled at me. Turn around! I had to face the wall. My dog catcher reappeared after a while and beckoned me to come up. going to win the war, you or us? What do you mean? Ah, you pray for a defeat every day, don't you? To Yahweh, or whatever it's called. It's the Jewish war, isn't it? Adolf Hitler said so. Abraham Hitler said it's true! Why didn't you shop at Hamlet's plots? We, we used to live there. You shop there because they give you more there. That's going to stop. Who's going to win the war, you or us? What do you mean? Well, you pray for a defeat every day, don't you? To Yahweh, whatever it's called. It's the Jewish war, isn't it? Adolf Hitler said so. I'm an Adolf Hitler said it's true! Why don't you shop at Hamlet's Platz? We, we, you still live there. You shop there because they give you more there. Yes? April 26th. The long expected house search. The raiding squad had appeared at five and departed shortly before my return. I found Eva, who was in our rooms, and she was completely calm. Everything had gone according to the familiar pattern. You're Aryan, you Jews whore. Why did you marry the Jew in the Talmud? It says to us, every non-Jewish woman is a whore. They repeatedly spat in Eva's face and on her head. In our apartment, I found the same chaos. The bestial devastation by cruel, drunken apes, which I have so often heard described, but the reality of which nevertheless appeared monstrous. The real catastrophe, however, befell the 77-year-old Frau Pick. She has again been terribly beaten and knocked about. Your husband had the malt factory? <laughs> the bloodsucker. Your litter is abroad and inciting hatred against us, but we've got you and you're, going to, you're not going to get away from us. You'll be at the Gestapo at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. You'll go alone. Oh, yeah, good, good. Everybody ready? Yeah? 26th of April, the long-expected house search. The raiding squad 
had appeared before five and left shortly before my return. I found Eva, who was in her rooms and was completely calm. Everything had gone according to the familiar pattern. You're Aryan, you Jews whore. Why did you marry the Jew to a... Shit, I have to say that. April 26th, in the late afternoon, the long-expected house search. The raiding squad had appeared here at five and departed shortly before my return. April 26th, a long expected house search. The raiding squad had appeared here at five and departed shortly before my return. In our rooms, I found Eva, who was completely calm. Everything had gone according to the familiar pattern. You're Aryan, you Jews whore. Why did you marry the Jew? In the Talmud, it says, to us, every non-Jewish woman is a whore. They repeatedly spat in Eva's face and on her head. In our rooms, I found the same chaos. The bestial devastation by cruel drunken apes, which I have so often heard described, but the reality of which nevertheless appeared monstrous. My diary manuscripts were hardly out of their folders. A couple of books had been taken off the shelf and lay on the desk, but the Greek dictionary with my last diary pages was untouched. The diary manuscript would unquestionably have cost me my life. The real catastrophe, however, did befall the 77-year-old Frau Pick. She has again been terribly beaten and knocked about. Your husband had the malt factory, the bloodsucker. Uh, your litter is abroad and inciting hatred against us, but we've got you and you're not going to get away from us. You'll be at the Gestapo tomorrow morning at 7. You'll go alone. Anyone going there with you goes straight to the concentration camp. Three fellows had tormented her. A fourth, alone with her for a moment, whispered to her in a most friendly fashion, take some good advice. Don't go there in the morning. So, there are traitors even among these people. Frau Pick said she was physically incapable of going all that way to be ill-treated once again. She'd had a good life and now it was over. Previously she always emphasized her will to live and her joy in life. We were seriously concerned about her. At nine she came up to see us, brought 50 mark, some jewelry, a couple of little things. We should have them if she were to be arrested tomorrow. At just before 10, I went down to see her. She was sitting quietly in her big leather armchair. A blanket pulled over her, very calm, but very pale. 
and there was a constant twitch between her eyes. I told her, we won't pretend. You intend to kill yourself. Think of your children. Think that while there's life, there's hope. That this Nazi's cause is hopeless. Stay brave, etc., etc. I tried to give her strength in every possible way. I said, Tom, give me your promise. You won't, do, you won't harm. You won't do any harm to yourself. I, I cannot promise that. I will consider things once again. I said, why don't you give me your Veronol? Where do all these people get the Veronol from? That would not make any difference, Professor. I have other remedies besides that one. I am so tired now and I feel so unwell. I went upstairs. We were all convinced that she would kill herself. 20th of August. A note on her bedroom table is written in a very deliberate hand, quite unlike my shaky one, and very carefully composed. I thank all, all who by their heartfelt courtesy have made my two and a half years in Strelen so pleasant. Heartfelt courtesy. How carefully considered. Yesterday and for most of today I was shattered. Now towards evening I am calmer once again. Things must go on under, even under these circumstances. Some kind of worthwhile reading will after all be found and I shall risk Continuing with the diary, I shall bear witness to the very end. This afternoon, therefore, these papers go to Anna Marie in Pirna. My latest fear is that they're not absolutely safe there either. If these manuscripts and the rest are discovered there, they will destroy Anna Marie, Eva, and myself. But the danger is so great and so omnipresent that it makes a fatalist of me. This manuscript is my duty and my last fulfillment. That's it.